Hey everyone, this is Chris back with the Beamer Barn and today we're going to be retrofitting the active servotronic steering on my E39 M5 wagon right here. Now the active servotronic steering is an M5 only feature for the E39 chassis which allows the car to go into a sport mode whereby it makes the steering feel more linear and sporty as well as a more linear throttle pedal and that will make the car feel more responsive. Now when we did the M5 swap on my car, I transferred the entire front subframe over with the steering box so I just haven't wired it in yet. Neither have I wired in the sport mode button. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how we wire all that together and hopefully by the end of this video, we will have functional sport mode on this car. Now, before we get into the video, I just wanna make some quick announcements about some upcoming content for the channel that I'm really excited about. Now, one thing that is huge is we're gonna be doing a 1600 mile road trip with the E39 M5 wagon. So my friend Max and I, we're gonna be going up to West Virginia for a ski trip all the way from here in Orlando, Florida. And this car is gonna be taking us there. I'm really excited because that's the whole purpose of this car here. I originally built it for good long distance trips and cruising on the highway. But before we go on our road trip, I have to do some final mods on the car, including some minor maintenance, as well as our airlift suspension install and some other small stuff. So stay tuned for that content. I'm gonna be posting on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays from now on. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet because we're going to be doing three videos a week. Now, after we get back and I post that video, I'm going to be announcing our 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Now, I don't have all the details coordinated yet, so I'm not gonna be able to share them with you right now, but I'm really excited. And I just wanna give back to the community because you guys have been so positive and have given me some really great feedback about this car. And I just appreciate you guys following along on the journey. So stay tuned for some really cool content coming to the channel. And without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. Alrighty guys, so we have everything in front of us that we need to do the Servotronic retrofit on my E39 M5 wagon. Now I have some extra wire here. This is automotive grade. I'll link it down in the description below, but I've used this to rebuild headlights where it needs to withstand high temperatures. So I know it's gonna work well in the engine bay. Uh, this is a spare harness that I got out of a junkyard. It's for an instrument cluster, but it has the pin receptacles that we're going to uh, sacrifice in order to use in our uh, on our DME side. And then here is a uh, Servotronic connector. So this is the white connector that would go into the steering box side. Uh, this is a chassis side harness connector, and that's why you won't find it on the harness of the stock non M5 cars. So this is the plug that you would need from an M5 in order to do like an OEM type of swap. You could just take this connector off and use any generic connectors or crimp it together for a permanent installation if you want. Uh, but over here, speaking of crimp connectors, we have some, but I'm mainly going to be doing a soldering job here. So that's why I have my soldering kit right there. And then we have our wiring diagram and I'll link this in the description below as well. You'll find a image of this on my blog. It's super high quality so you can read it well or just pause on camera now in case you need to see it. But there you go, that's the wiring for the Servotronic steering. I'm gonna go ahead and use this as a reference in order to build our makeshift harness. And uh, hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have working Servotronic steering. Hey guys, so I was gonna make a little voiceover here talking about what we were doing here, uh, but I just wanna get some feedback from you guys, see if you guys enjoy more of the voiceover stuff where I just kinda talk over what's going on, or would you prefer if you know I just kept things more simple where it was just more oriented around the sounds of what's going on and also maybe some background music. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys prefer. I really wanna hear what you guys think uh, and that way I can make the videos better for you.
Yeah, so this is a really cool trick that I want to show with you guys. It's something that I do when I'm like building out a, a harness or I'm trying to, you know, route some wires around like an engine bay. Obviously, you want some protection from like heat and stuff like that or the elements, but also you want to keep these wires pretty tightly together so that they're not like making a mess or looking all messy and stuff. So, what I like to do is I grab some electrical tape and I'll just wrap it around the wires and uh, try to wrap it at an angle so that you know you're not just wrapping in the same spot over and over obviously but that makes a very similar to oem harness and i think that you know most people would agree with me if you look at what the oem harness is wrapped in around the engine bay it has like this plastic you know electrical tape it almost looks like uh, so this is a pretty cool trick i want to share with you guys and it gives us a really clean result at the end
Now in order to get some wires to the sport button you have to get them through the firewall uh, but instead what we ended up doing was using some of the leftover wires from the automatic transmission harness and there are just these uh, two pins that go into the car I think for like a shifter light for the automatic transmission. Now you'll know that you have the right wires because the colors on the two wires are going to match the same ones as pins one and two on this transmission connector right here. You can see they're literally the same colors. So while this does save us the work of routing some wires into the car, we do have to change out the pins that are on this thing. So I had to grab a uh, donation from our parts car and we were able to reuse the pins out of another car's connector into our car in order to add the sport button feature. And here one of the pins that we had to add was a ground but instead of finding a new ground source under the dashboard I just went ahead and used a tap and tapped into another ground on that harness and uh, that saved us a little bit of time. So now we're going to see if the button lives up to the hype. So let's put our key in the ignition here. Turn the car to position two and now when we press this button we should see it light up and that would indicate that we have sport mode oh yeah check it out guys working sport mode and it stays on too which means it's really working so if you were having an issue with your servotronic like it was failed or it had like a fault code then you would see this light actually come on and then it would flicker and turn off on its own because there's an issue and it won't allow you to go into a sport mode. So let's go ahead and take the car for a quick drive and I'll give you guys some of my impressions and we'll show you, try to show you some of the functionality. But again, this is a very steering oriented and driver feel oriented thing. Um, so you won't be able to exactly see the result. But I guarantee you, if you've experienced this sport button feel before on one of these cars, it's like a completely different car, especially on the E39 M5. Alrighty, so now we're on the road and we are in comfort mode currently, so we don't have the button actuated. I have to say that I, I, I do enjoy the throttle mapping in this mode, as well as the steering feel. The steering is definitely lighter than uh, before when the connectors were not plugged in for this steering. Um, so I, I enjoy this kind of comfort mode, makes the car you know, much more enjoyable to drive around town, low speeds especially. But then when you want to, you know, you have that option to put the car in a sport mode and it really, really takes things up a notch. Again, it, it's something that you really can't show well on camera, but it's a, it's a very different driving feel. So here you go. We'll go ahead and press the sport mode button. And I, I, again, I can't, I don't know if you guys can tell that the steering is definitely stiffer um, you, you feel it after about, you know, what is that? Like five, 10 degrees. It's definitely stiffer. And, uh, the throttle response is much, much more responsive. Um, so I, I, I would worry about driving this car in sport mode through the city and stuff, because with how responsive this motor is, you can get into a lot of choppy situations where, you know, the, the throttle response is just going to make you lurch forward and backwards um and that's just kind of the nature of the motor it's it's a torquing motor so it's nice to have that comfort mode so i'm gonna go ahead and put this back in comfort mode here but i'm, I'm really glad that this feature works and yeah that, that steering definitely feels much softer and better past like 10 degrees with the car in comfort mode so i would consider this a success 
Alrighty, everyone, that is going to conclude today's video. I hope that you enjoyed watching. Now, I'm super happy that we retrofitted this sport feature because now we can finally put the car into its sport mode. But most importantly, the steering was actually much stiffer before. I think that the default setting when that white connector is unplugged or when the car doesn't know what's wrong or what to do with the steering, it defaults to a much stiffer setting, which is uncomfortable. It feels like the power steering is actually going out. So that's all fixed. And I'm really excited because I didn't want to drive a whole 1600 miles with that stiff, annoying steering. So let me know if you think this is a cool feature on the E39 M5, or if you found this video because you're having some issues with your Servotronic and you're trying to troubleshoot it, then I hope that we helped you out. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more cool BMW content like this. We have a lot of stuff planned, as I said earlier. And like the video if you want to help support the channel. We really appreciate it. Check out some of this cool merch on our website, thebeamerbarn.com. And I hope everyone has an awesome day. We'll see you next time.